All right, so I am just here with Wicket, our newest board and train. Wicket's here for a three-week program to work on some uh, some pretty bad reactivity issues. He likes to bark. Well, he doesn't like to, but he gets fearful of and barks at other dogs and people. He also has some resource guarding issues. He, he likes to try to, quote-unquote, protect his family, as well as resource guard them and items around them. So he's kind of got um, some serious relationship issues, some serious pack hierarchy issues going on at home. He seems to think that he's kind of in charge of his family. They even told me that uh, when it's feeding time, um, if he bangs on his bowl, his kids come down and feed him. So he's got them trained pretty well, and we're going to work on kind of restructuring their relationship and how, how the dog, how Wicket sees them, their fa his family, um, in terms of their role as leaders and uh, their ability to provide him with the leadership he needs so he don't, no longer has these insecure, reactive, fearful behaviors. So... I'm just going to go through the first little process here of uh, teaching him our tone recall using the e-collar. He's already been conditioned on a prong collar. He's already done some balance training as well as some force free training. So we're going to focus on introducing the tools that he really needs to, uh, to help him succeed as well as throughout the process of his training, teaching his owners how to better live with him in a way, again, that sets themselves up at, at the top of that totem pole, so to speak, as, as the leaders that, uh, that Wicket needs here. So. Um, yeah, we're going to set this phone down here and I'm going to get a little bit of video here as I teach him the concept of the tone. The, what we're doing is we're working on our heel command or more so our follower position. So we want him to be behind us. And as you can see, I'm actually walking backwards down the sidewalk right now. I've got the e-collar and a slip leash on him. And what I'm doing is anytime he starts to wander ahead or even when he's doing really well like he is right now, I'm going to take a turn and say, wicket, come and tap the tone button on my electronic collar. And ideally, he's going to stay about this far behind me, following where I'm going. And then pretty quickly here, what I can do, once he's got this down, come, tap my tone button, give my, give my come command, tap my tone button. If he ignores that and hits the end of the leash, what I'm going to do is tap the stimulation. So it's going to be wicked come, tap the tone, and if he ignores it and hits the leash, stimulation, okay? And uh, I had a, a name tag on here, but it's rubbed off, as you can see. It's at a level six right now. We'll probably have to turn that up, though, with Wicket. So anytime he hits the end of that leash, that's just going to be a tap on that e-collar. Wicket, come. There's a tap on the e-collar. Wicket, come. Tap the tone. And a tap on the stimulation. Tone is here. Stimulation here. What we should have is him walking well behind us and giving us some, paying attention to us, right? So when I take a turn... He should be turning with me, right? Good boy. Good. We're praising when he's doing a good job. Good boy, Wicket. And so with this position here, I can pretty quickly turn around and face the way that I would normally face on my walk with him actually behind me. But you can see here, he's going to start to creep up. And so when he does, I'm going to turn back into him using some of that spatial pressure and slowing him down again. You can see what kind of a difference that makes, okay, when you're facing them versus when you turn away. Come. Good. Stim. Pulling them into me. Tone. Okay, come. Good boy. Okay, come. Good. Turning back around. And just keep them on the, the left side pretty well. This is ideally where we're going to have them walking from now until he goes home and beyond. In this follower mentality, right? So he's going to get ahead here and then I'm going to take a turn, tap my tone button. Wicket, come. Good. Tap my tone button. And now he should be right behind me. And we're facing forward now, so we're walking properly. And picking this up quick. This is our first lesson actually doing this with the e-collar. We've done a little bit of loose leash walking stuff yesterday, his first day here. But this is the first time we've done any e-collar stuff. So what I'm going to do now is he's on the, he's kind of creeping on that right side. So I'm just going to pull the leash over here and tap on my stimulation. To use that leash to guide him. As soon as he gets back into the proper position, which is right here, I'm going to release that stimulation. Or stop tapping the stimulation. Good. And now he's a good distance behind us, and that's what we want. A lot of people ask how I get this kind of walking behind, and this is one of the ways. We have a couple ways of doing it. 
This is one of the ways with the e-collar. Now he keeps wandering his nose off over here. Just reeling that leash in a little bit here. He keeps kind of wandering off to the right. And so what we're gonna do here is just reel the leash in a touch, get a little bit more control. And when he starts to wander over there, he's trying to sniff the ground and stuff. We're just gonna mark with a no and tap on our e-collar, guiding him back over to the left side right there. Perfect. So this is gonna be the pressure free zone. When he's in this position, he won't feel any e-collar pressure as long as he doesn't dilly daddle or wander off. So right here. Tapping the button, there we go. Nope, good. And what we're looking for is him to be right here, right behind us. Good job. And this is a slip leash in the e-collar here, so you could do this with a prong collar or a slip leash as well without the e-collar. Just a little bit of a different technique to it. So we're going to turn into him here. He should turn. Good boy. Nice work. Just a little tap on the e-collar there. He started to wander off to that right. So Wicket's picked this up very quickly here with the walking behind. Just anytime he gets tight on that leash, we're going to tap on that e-collar and guide him back into that position right here behind our left leg. And so basically, like I said, we're making a pressure free zone where there's no e-collar pressure right here behind our left leg, anywhere within that bubble. As long as that leash doesn't get tight and doesn't wander off, there's no e-collar pressure. Good boy. And this is how we get them to learn to follow us. Heel. Good. They start to lag behind you can just tighten up that leash a bit and tap on the e-collar he should speed up and get back into the proper position same thing if he wanders off to the side we can just tap on the e-collar stimulation and get him back into this position okay Good boy. nope Good. 